This makeup is undetectable. You literally can't see it. It's the ultimate no makeup makeup look. Ready to learn? I'm going to show you all the techniques. And if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. I like to know how you feel either way. All of the products that I use are relevant, but I'm going to explain this in a way that allows you to use what you have. And of course, I'll link the items below in case you want to pick up something new. Now let's get started. This is the ultimate no makeup makeup look. Each time you go to do your makeup, whether it's full coverage or like what we're doing today, take a deep breath because this time is for you and yourself. I'm big on sunscreen. Irregardless of what you put on as a base, making sure your skin is moisturized using a sunscreen that's hydrating like this one is so important because the hydration of the skin is going to come through in a big way for this look. Now, I love this sunscreen in particular because it's like a moisturizer, literally. If you've used sunscreen on your face before, you usually know like it's a bit of a mission to blend it in, but this one within a few swirls of my fingers, it's evaporated or sinks into the skin, leaving like a dewy finish and it's undetectable. You know, when you do your makeup, it's like usually kind of autopilot vibes. That's so not what we're doing today. We actually need to be really present and look at the skin in a very particular way. We're looking for what tones stand out as obviously needing color correction. Underneath the eyes, we're going to color correct. Luckily, I have a peach corrector that will cancel out that dark blue tone because I've been color correcting underneath my eyes for a few years, but when you approach makeup this way, you may find that you need to buy a new product in order to do less makeup because when you're putting on less makeup, you have to be more particular about the tones. I'm finding the discoloration that is dark and I'm putting this corrector over top of those marks, pressing it in with my finger, but not blending out, keeping it padded right in place where it was put originally. Now, if we were to just go in with the concealer that is the same shade of our skin, the discoloration would still peek through and it would look as though we had a layer of makeup over top of our skin. But when we correct first, the whole face is neutralized. Now using a concealer that's the same shade as my skin, it's going to look undetectable. Let the product dry down while you blend it and that's going to make it stay in the general area that it was placed down, which is so important. Now using the same concealer to do two different things is not going to fare well in this particular look. While you use your skin match concealer to even out the canvas of the skin, with this next technique, it's important to add a dimension that the eye can't catch on to. And if we use the same shade of concealer, it may be obvious. Make a smile and place this lighter concealer right at the high point, the fattest part of the cheek, leaving about three quarters of an inch underneath the eye and leaving the lower cheek free of this product. Important, the placement is not wide, it's very small. Typically putting down concealer means spreading it out and up and down, but here we're going to pounce it in place, letting it dry down without blending it up underneath the eye. All of the fine lines that when we smile make a crease, they won't have any concealer in them. And in fact, they'll still have discoloration, which is going to help us with this next step. Before we address the eyes, I'm going to start by looking at the whole face again. This is a great technique in makeup. Take a look, step back, and address the structure of the face. Using a cool tone contour shade, I'm going to make a little bit of a shadow underneath the jawline. With an undetectable makeup look like this, you'll never actually see it, but it will add a little something extra to frame the face, as well as applying a little bit to the top of the forehead. So for powder, you can use any powder that you normally do, but I'm really happy that I now have this one, which is different than your average powder. Like normally powder looks like powder and we just try to do our best to make sure it looks kind of hydrated. But this one is specifically made to reflect light off of it, which means it's not good for like a really full coverage look. I don't think it's really good when you want undetectable makeup. I'm going to use a sponge and I'm just like pressing this over the areas that get oily and leaving out the areas that don't to set the concealer and now we'll move on to blush. Normally I would swirl it and make a really blended look, 
but this time I'm actually going for something that looks like total blood flow. This blush is sheer, so if I press it into the skin, making it look splotchy at first, it actually will look like blotchy red skin in a natural way, which people think is undesirable, but usually it's the other tones in your skin that make the blotchy redness also not look good. Now, because my eyes have a lot of purple around them, I'm going to use a rusty orange, the exact opposite in the color wheel, and add this eyeshadow all around the eyes in the area where I would have concealed, we're actually going to neutralize and emphasize the discoloration. This is an immediate cue to the eye that there's no makeup there because there's this sheer wash of discoloration and no concealer present around the eye area. Mascaras that are for length are going to look really natural because they just separate the lashes and they keep it clean. They never get clumpy. So I'll apply some of that to both eyes, only on the top because I don't want it to flake and smudge on the bottom. Thumbs up this video if you're enjoying so far. I'm going to use a spoolie because inevitably you like add a little too much mascara and then you have to like remove it. You could just use an eyebrow pencil spoolie or one on a brush like I'm using and just smooth out the lashes so that they look really long and natural, but no clumps of mascara are visible. This is a great product to use because it rarely works. <laughs> it's for the eyebrows and it's meant to be like a tattoo brow effect, but like I said, it rarely actually works. So I thought I'd give it a try just to start filling on my brows, but it's like one of those pens that sometimes the ink comes out and sometimes it doesn't. We're not gonna shape the eyebrows today, no, because all you want to do in a no makeup, undetectable look is fill in the places where there's no color at all, but the brow is technically supposed to be there. That's all we're gonna do, and then brush up the brows so that they're all tamed and neat. Funny enough, in a makeup look where everything is there, but you can't see it, you have a lot of focus on the eyes themselves and the lips. These are going to be cues of like health and vitality, so make sure that, of course, the skin itself is hydrated, but also the lips. This is a light reflecting, very sheer wash of color lip balm that's really nourishing. It's meant to care for the lips more than it is meant to color them. It adds a little something and it feels good. One of the best tricks in no makeup looks is to have clear, bright eyes that have no redness and using an eye drop for this, whenever I need to brighten up my eyes, this will really create an extra little effect that nobody would know, but it makes a big difference. Clear eyes, clear skin, and a free of makeup look that feels good and looks really natural and beautiful. You have the right to wear the full face of makeup and feel amazing, and you have the right to perfect everything to the degree that you can appreciate your own beauty like this with no distractions. And I hope you enjoy. I love you.